I love the title, uh, My Journey from Streets and Saloons to the Stage and Sinatra. That couldn't be a more perfect uh, title because you cover, uh, obviously, you cover Growing Up in Harvey. And then uh, I love the fact you moved to L.A. And, you, you know, you started, obviously, you've been doing this longer than me, but you started right at the, the that that mecca time, like that 70s, early 70s comedy store, Letterman, you know, back when the real, I think there were still real true voices in stand-up. I mean, there's some great guys. There's obviously some great guys out there now, but some of the great voices came out in the 70s, and you started in that group at the comedy store. Yeah, you know, in 1975, wherever you went in America, people say, what do you do for a living? You say, I'm a stand-up comedian. And the next question out of their mouth was, oh, yeah, you ever been on Johnny Carson? If you haven't been on Johnny Carson in the eyes of America, you just want a comedian. You might want to be one. You might going to be one, but you weren't one now. Now, Freddie Prince did one appearance on The Tonight Show. The next day, he got a sitcom. You know, I did one appearance on The Tonight Show. The next day, CBS signed me to a development deal. A guy named Lee Curlin was watching in New York. My, but, but prior to that, I'm struggling. I mean, the comedy team broke up. I ended up sleeping in a car out here. I left my wife and kids in Chicago. I'm hitchhiking up and down Sunset Boulevard, begging to work for free at the comedy store every night. Um, you know, just struggling, you know. And uh, and when I kept pestering the Tonight Show to come and see me, it's a long story, but that first appearance on that Tonight Show, when Johnny Carson in 1972 left New York City hosting the Tonight Show and came out to the West Coast. When he came out here, that's when everybody migrated out here, you know. The, the Letterman's and the Leno's and the Gallagher's and the Michael Keaton's and all the Robin Williams, all the people that I used to perform with, unknowns. They were all totally unknowns at the time because that's this is where it was going to happen. Sunset Boulevard was the hottest thing in the co- country, the comedy yeah. store. There was no improvisation out here. There were no other places but the comedy store where you could get discovered. And every night, every night, there were talent coordinators in there and, and casting people from all the shows, you know. I did one appearance on The Tonight Show, and I never stopped since that day. I ended up doing 61 appearances. But uh, after I did The Tonight Show, these were the shows that wanted you. Dinah Shore, Merv Griffin, Johnny Carson, Midnight Special, Rock Concert, Soul Train, Mike Douglas, uh, American Bandstand, um, uh, all these shows, you know, they, they were calling, for, they wanted comedians. Every night, some kid would come off the stage at the and say, I just got the Merv Griffin show, I just got the Mike Douglas show. Or they want me up in Canada. There, there were TV shows up in Canada that were sending their coordinators down. The, the buzz on that street, the, the excitement in that audience. Yeah. You know, it was, it was unbelievable. You know, I, I would work on stage every night with all these unknown comedians, David Letterman, you know, Jay Leno, Robin Williams, Gallagher, you know, Michael Keaton. Like I said, the girl waiting tables was Deborah Winger, you know. Um, <laughs> and and it, it was just an exciting time. But they're also, what the kids don't have today, and I feel sorry for them, there wasn't a path to stardom, if you want to call it that. Um, today, you know, you could do 20, show, 20 shows on the, uh, Tonight Show, 20 appearances, and you probably still would be fairly unknown. 26 million people watched The Tonight Show in those days. 26 right. million people, there, were, there was no cable television. So, you know, uh, and that, that, that in, Lenny, brings another problem. You had to work clean. Yeah. You, you, you were in show business, that's two words, show business. A businessman, you say, how do I get on The Tonight Show? That's where I got to go to get discovered. You watch the comedians on The Tonight Show. Yeah, They were doing material that could make grandma and grandpa, mom and dad, and the kids laugh. Mm-hmm. You couldn't say, go to hell. Yeah, it was and, way stricter you know, back then. Yeah, the censors were way yeah. stricter back in the 70s, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you really had a, a, had a tough time, you know. Um, uh, but anyhow, so so that, that was the, the other thing was coming up with one Tonight Show is one thing. Coming up with five Tonight Shows is another. Coming up with 10 Tonight Shows. And Johnny wanted a new six minutes every time you did the show. Yeah. So there was a lot of a lot of pressure. I was, I was constantly writing and constantly in the state of of uh, my next Tonight Show. You know? Yeah, you're constantly rebuilding the next set. The second you get out, the second you finish that last one, you're immediately thinking about the next one. On the way home. Yeah. The moment, I, the moment the show was over, on the way home, I'm thinking of my next shot. And maybe the maybe even before, maybe you get to a point where the last you know, like two weeks before that Tonight Show, because you're already going in, you know, you you've got a pretty good idea what you're doing for that Tonight Show. So if you start thinking of stuff, you go, oh, this can be for the next one, and you put it like on a side note or whatever. And this can be for the next one. You know, you, you already have your idea what you're gonna do for this Tonight Show. You st- the more ideas you come up with, you put them on the side, and you go, I'm gonna work on this later for the next one. So yeah, it's like you're constantly yeah. hu- well, you're always hustling. You know, you know what I did, Lenny? Honestly, God, after I did about thirty Tonight Shows. I, 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 you know, I, I'm going all around the country and everything, and I'd say, geez, I got to come up with another Tonight Show. 
I had carte blanche in those days where I didn't have a, tel have a telecorner or come and see me. They knew me. I, I, I knew they wanted a, a five to six minute tight set and then some funny stories to tell Johnny. They knew I knew that. So I would call them and I didn't have the first joke, Lenny, the first joke. And I'd say, I'm available three weeks from now, March 18th. Say, I just throw a date out there. They'd say, look, okay, Tommy, here you go, you're on. And now I don't have the first joke Manic would set in. You know, necessity was the mother of invention. You know, Are you serious? I would take my tape recorder. Oh, shit, I'd take my tape recorder to the comedy store, to the improv, to the laughing. I'd be going to all three places. I'd be doing, every night. I'd, I'd be working, and, and yeah. you know, because that forced me to sit down and focus. Because, you know, uh, and, and, and to come up with a new Tonight Show, you know, 